Low Hill Fire Station in Liverpool. It's one o'clock in the morning. What is it? Address. Address. Both. Both machines. Whitewatch have received a 999 call reporting smoke coming from a house. Fires where lives could be at risk are given top priority. Both of Low Hill's engines will respond. Yeah. Gary Hollis is Whitewatch's senior officer. Get to the dress, let's have you set, son. Firefighters Brian Donnelly and John Graves put on breathing apparatus, which will allow them to search even in the thickest smoke. Whenever we get an address, the lads get the breathing apparatus set on straight away because it saves time, it can be straight off the machine and then the house quicker. There might be someone in, there might be not, but we don't take a chance. An infrared camera fitted to Brian's helmet will get us as close to the fire as the firefighters themselves. There's people in the street, they've got something here. This is it now. The girl upstairs. The girl upstairs. Water on, lads. The girl is trapped on the first floor. Her only way out is down the stairs, which are on fire. Jump. The fire's soon out, but it's filled the house with smoke. Jump! Yeah! There's another floor. There's five on one floor, there's two rooms on the floor above. Ah, get me a sledgehammer! I'm getting a sledgehammer, Gary! I'm a sledgehammer, Paul. More people die from the effects of smoke than are killed by fire. <laughs> You got her? Yeah, I got her. Come on, man. Well, I'm going to slow down. Okay, come on. You feel like it's what you said. Right, clear the way. Come on. We've got one coming out, Les. She's coming out. Did you get the hand? The ambulance up there. Yes. I don't know. Is there any chance of anyone else in? There's one person out. I just watched that last step there, it's gone. It was only me and, and you. Okay, out you go. Yeah. Is there only you in? Yes, it's only, it's only the London, where I was in. You're the only person who was in there? No, there are about five rooms and there were girls and one more room. So there may be someone else in? There may be. Okay. The smoke's still very thick. Anyone else inside remains in danger. I heard the shout when you were knocking the door in, didn't you? What? Did you hear the shout? No. I heard the shout when you were checking the door in or something. I'll that one too. You done all these, Kev? Yeah. Is it all clear? This is, yeah, but there's still two rooms upstairs. Yeah, there's two upstairs. Yeah, you can send a message for me, all persons accounted for, over. A teenage boy who'd also been in the house escaped before White Watch arrived. I just woke up and the house was on fire, that was it. I, ran, I went to run down them stairs there, and like all the smoke was there, and knocked me back. So then he had to climb out of that window and just jump off. No rubbish in there, no eaters, nothing. OK, thanks. Now everyone's out, the fire investigation can begin. Two miles away, Red Watch are on an emergency call to another house. Yes, straight on, through the lights. And it's on the left, just through the lights. But I'm not sure which one, I'll let turn to check it out. Firefighters Gavin Bassey and Alan Jones, nicknamed Kipper, will be first in if there's a fire. Any idea which one, Gav? You want me right or left? Left. Let's walk, keep going. Yes, well, one after. That's it. This one. That's it. 
The smoke there is it? The team spots smoke in a narrow alleyway behind some houses. The middle of the road. It's about half, halfway up. I'm going up to have a quick look. Up here, in there, quick. The nearest the fire engine can get is the other end of the alleyway. From the back of the house, it's impossible to tell if anyone's inside. I'm not going to get in there, Gal. To get the water on it. Got water. I'm not going to get in first. Get the water, Kip. Gavin, like, Gavin's here. Another reel. Has Gavin got in there? No. All right, get a reel in the spot. Out the way, Bobby! Out the way! They need to find another way in to search the house. The fire's still not under control, but the second team have got in the front and are searching the ground floor. The ground floor's clear, but anyone upstairs is at risk from the smoke. The upstairs rooms are empty. It appears the house is being renovated. The fires destroyed one of the ground floor rooms. I had a word with the neighbour and he said we've had trouble with kids playing around here. But the uh, doors of the room saved it from anywhere else. You know, it burnt nearly to oblivion. But uh, we've only got smoke damage outside this room, so it's contained it pretty well. White Watch are still trying to find out what caused the fire that could so easily have cost a life. We had any trouble in the last few weeks. Okay. Somebody kicked the door in. Yeah, we have that. The front door, just kicked in. Do you know anything about that? What happens over? I've got a clue. The work Alice sent them round all the time, so... There is? Yeah, we're past me. Do you talk to the other girls? Not really, no. Where are you going to go now? Are you... I'm going to... I've got some friends living round the corner, so I've just run away. Can I go and get some stuff now? Because all the plastic's coming off the walls and stairway, so we're just going to clear that. OK. Are you cold? Um, I'm okay. Well, so sit in the back of the fire engine if you want, and I'll give you a shout. No, it's all right, I can wait. Sure, do you want right. jacket? No, okay. Do you want this jumper? Do you have time to eat? I can do a phone call. Have you got your dust devil? <laughs> <laughs> as soon as it's clear, I'll come out and find you. And you right, okay. Go. I'll be here. You, you didn't have any idea that the place was on fire till someone was knocking on your door? Exactly. Was it the fire brigade who were knocking on your door or someone else? Um, the fire yeah. Looking at where the fire started, in the entrance hallway, the only thing it could have been was malicious. Someone's deliberately set fire to it. Um, there's no electrical equipment in the area. There's no gas. There's no flammables, no combustibles, no smoking materials. 
there's obvious signs of forced entry. When we got here, the front door was wide open um, and the fire was just on the staircase. The police do know um, history of people who've uh, kicked the door in, so we're treating it as, as a malicious fire. You're looking after the place, are you? Yeah. Are so you expecting something like this? No. Schwartz, if you keep over to the left hand side. Yeah, Gary's becoming suspicious about the boy's account of how he escaped the fire. The young lad said he was in here um, when he smelt the smoke. Went out, went to the staircase. So there was a fire at the bottom with smoke coming up. So he came in and got out the window. We actually lifted the blinds up when, you come in? when we came in. There's no marks, nothing disturbed. We said we didn't think he went out that window. He said, no, I went out the kitchen window. So. Is that a communal kitchen or is it? The yes, it, 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 it's, it's here. It's communal. He's obviously gone to the staircase there, seen the smoke, come right. back in. And bear in mind, he knows there's a girl in there. Right. He hasn't woken her up. And he says that he's come in here and he's got out of that window. He's got no shoes on. Yeah. He's 20 feet from the ground. Those look like marks of our lads opening up to ventilate. There's no marks of anyone's feet, no hand marks. Nothing's been disturbed there. And if you move it... The imprint of it, yeah. yeah. Sugar is. And he yes. reckons he's shitting down the gas pipe. I mean, if you can have a look at the mouth... You can't even see the gas no, pipe from the top, of, the top of our fire engine's about 11 foot from the ground. So we're probably 17, 20 feet. You'd have to get your head right through that window before you can actually see yeah. it as a gas And I think yeah. I would suggest that you would leave hand marks at least around the window. Gary's done all he can. Now it's up to the police to investigate further. Four days later, White Watch are back on duty. Oh, who is it? Just 4 2. Railway embankments. Just 4 2. Just 4 2. Just for two. All the work, half the money. I'm done it half the time. Go away, so. Gary's sub officer, Billy Walsh, is in charge of the second of Low Hill's two engines. Firefighter Paul Hitchin realises he's been there before. It's a railway embankment. It's had to throw a lot of rubbish down there. Low Hill's second engine, the pump as it's known, can be called out as often as 15 times in any one shift. We call us the busy bus because virtually every caller comes in for the station. This machine goes out to. Just see the smoke as you come round there. Anyway, because there's loads of smoke. Right, looks like it's in the tunnel, that. Right corner. The fire's at the bottom of the embankment. There's no way down from here. We'll have to go round, like. It's exactly the place that I said it'd be. It's like a dead end, there's the road that you go up. It? Yeah, it might be this. You go right up to the end. There's an hydrant on the other side as well. Yeah, this yeah, is it. This is it. The disused railways become a dumping ground. Feel the cylinders at the bottom. Actually frighten the life out of me, them things. They are literally a bomb when they're heated. Absolutely deadly. What's buried underneath? God only knows. The fire's been burning for some time. Old aerosols and canisters, which can explode when heated, are also buried amongst the rubbish. All right, all right. All right, go ahead. Oh, 
Okay, Les, yeah. We'll get two going, otherwise we're going to be here all day. The rubbish is at least 15 foot deep, and it all appears to be smouldering. That hydrant's rubbish, you know. Is this it? We're only getting the trickle through, Bill. We're not going to have enough water for two. Uh oh. There's Billy with the forks and shovels. The worst sight possible. To get at the fire underneath, the rubbish has to be dug out, and it seems to be burning inside the tunnel as well. We're going to have to get in and work it all for. Back at the station, Gary's dealing with a different kind of emergency. I've never, ever had my wedding ring off. <clears throat> is it sore at all? Yeah, my finger is. But, as I say, it's 37 years. I'm giving me age away now. I've put washing up liquid on, I've put grease. I've done everything and it's not working. And I was a bit sentimental, thinking, oh, gosh, I've got to get it cut off. Well, you don't want to damage it, do you? Oh, um, no. OK, I'll just grab the ring cutter. Nip, nip the end of your... I can just nip the end of your finger off with this, and then it'll just drop off. And your ring won't be damaged, then. Oh, my goodness, mate. Oh, well, don't. <laughs> this is dreadful, this. I don't believe this. You're having me on, I'm sure. We're just going into the tunnel now, so just getting a couple of torches. Go in and see what's happening in there. So, down you go. See you in a minute. Don't forget your abseiling technique, but I... Oh, yeah. Whitewatch aren't sure whether there are gas cylinders in the confined space inside the tunnel. Good call. You still over there? Hey. Come and down. OK, we're over to your left. Cylinders everywhere here. Another one. Another bomb. They do explode. It, it would devastate. We we wouldn't survive in this particular area. We're standing now if one of these went. So I like that now. Billy by moonlight. Yeah. <laughs> Billy by moonlight. Billy by moonlight. Let's get back. We've done as much as we can here. The fire's out, but they still have to get their equipment and themselves back up to the top. <laughs> Billy up, Sarah? The average fellow is probably very difficult for me, it's not a problem. <laughs> As Billy gets back to the station, Gary's still dealing with his emergency. This will just slide under the underneath. This is a a genuine you cut thing. Me finger, no, there's a there's a piece it's of protection. Ma that's yeah. <laughs> that is typical, isn't it? Yeah. You just hold that there. <laughs> just warm it. <laughs> Who is it? To you, Bill. Just four two. Well, just four two. Well, the busy crew. Don't know what it is, but I'm not yeah. going. I'm really apprehensive about getting it because I've got close at the end of the day. Just stay with Dave. That's the other one. Yeah. Your ring will be all right. Your ring will drop off. Hmm. Okay. I'll come off now. That's cheap, man. Look at that. 37 years this year. So that means another 200 and half for a new ring. Don't you reckon? Two hundred pounds per ring. It's one hundred and ninety-seven pounds per hour. I've already made inquiries. <laughs> you think I'm joking? Oh, Read, got your glasses. Know. Read the top line. What's it say? I've said it won't cost you nothing. You're not a bit sympathetic. You're trying to charge me money, and here's me all sentimental, getting my ring off. I thought you'd have fucking denied. Bravo, Central Four Two, in attendance over. Yeah. Billy's nine 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 call turns out to be a car fire. The fire's in the engine, but it could quickly spread through the wiring to the rest of the car. Right in this towards the door. 
<coughs> Man who doesn't flash, Kev. Yeah. Get a crowbar, Kev. Can you come round? We got that bonnet up yet, no? No. The fire's out, but the car's owner has had a narrow escape. No, I was just driving around the corner, the smoke started billowing out. Oh gosh, am I going to get in trouble for this? No, 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 I thought it was going to explode, that sort of was really frightening me. It'll be all right with a bit of paint, won't it? <laughs> you know, not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> hey, in the AA for the RAC. <laughs> that note is really silly, but all, a lot of my work stuff's in there because I'm a psychologist who's more worried about that. I wanted to go back and get it out, but thank God I got out of it, you know. I think I'm just going to sit down and have a cup of tea now. <laughs> Forget about work. <laughs> I need a psychologist myself now. <laughs> Oh well, I didn't, I was sick of that car anyway, so I'll have to get a new one now. Okay fellas, we'll uh, get, get away now. Thanks a lot. As okay. Billy finishes with the car, he hears over the radio that Gary's been called to another fire. The call's what's known as a person's reported, the most serious type of fire, where people are trapped inside a building. Central 4 has just responded to a person's reported in our area. Are you going to give us it? Central 3 Bravo, over. 3 Bravo, message 3 Bravo. We could be just round the corner from where it is, and we don't know where it is. Responding to person's reported 232 Pendine Close. We've got to go, haven't we? Mobile go, head over. Go, no? The fire's in a block of flats. Billy's team are just around the corner. You can see the flames on about the sixth of the seventh floor, Bill. Oh, yeah, you see it now. It's really going well. You can see the flames now. OK, yeah. Got a medic. Got eighth floor, please. Yeah, we'll get up there. The fire's in a flat on the seventh floor. A man still trapped inside. The block's security camera shows Gary's team are already on their way up in the lift. As Gary's team arrive on the seventh floor, they hit a wall of smoke. They have to start their search without water to attack the fire. Pumping it up the block's internal piping system, the dry riser, will take time. Oh, is this that one next door, the, the one bedroom? I'm not sure which one it is. They've found the man, but the smoke's so intense he's unconscious. Yeah, you've got it now. Nothing through here yet. Yeah. Okay. Water reaches the seventh floor as the man's taken out of the building. You just hang on, there's someone on the seventh floor, the lift, an asthmatic. Yeah. They're trying to get them down there. Is that the same one he reckons as another no, one? There's on the no one. You can see it on the camera. So, the man's not the only one who's been affected by the fire. Where have we gone? The eighth floor, boss? Fifth. Ali, fifth. fifth. This staircase, fifth. this side, they're bringing it down. Yeah. Gary's team is still fighting the fire in the flat. What's happened? What's happened to you, the valve connecting the block's internal pipe to the hose reel has blown off. Water being pumped at pressure from the ground floor is now flooding the seventh floor landing. Crews on the ground must now shut the water off, but the flat's still on fire. Any, any passenger valve? 
get some of the water and fucking throw it on it. Water from the landing has to be scooped up in buckets and used to put the fire out. Ten minutes later, the fire's out. It's destroyed the flat. The burst riser has caused further damage. There's only one lift. If it won't come up, tell him to get up the stairs because I want him up here. When we did get the dry riser main, which we used to fight the fire, full of water, you can see the landing valve is actually blown straight off and shattered on the floor. If there'd been somebody standing in front of that when it went, we'd have had a fireman injured, and I mean severely injured. The fire started in the kitchen. Food had been left on the cooker. We can't just leave this like this, even though it's uninhabitable. We've got to dig everything out just to make sure that there's nothing still on fire. And with there being nowhere for it to go, it can't go over the side with it being on the sixth or seventh floor. It's all got to go back out and down in the lifts. Yeah, I don't know where putting it down. Cleaning up's going to be a long job. We don't want to catch the cup of tea off the community centre. When the relief come, crew come, you're going to need some light gear up here. Received of it. Now, can everyone leave me alone for a minute? I want a ciggy. Gary Oslo's Williams over. Drop dead. I'm going to give me one of them. See that on the road square. Marvellous. Marvellous. Cold. Send the boys to do a man's job and get cold tea. Down the road, Red Watch are back on duty. On this shift, Gavin's teamed up with firefighter Phil Roberts. It's a shed. I know it's a shed on balcony. What is it we've got? We're going to a shed on a balcony, which is a strange description. What is it, a balcony on a shed? Maybe it's a balcony on a shed, yeah. So we don't know what we're going to get. But we've been there before to a false alarm, so it's likely to be a false alarm, we think. But then again, it could be the big one. Who's that, Darrow? Again. Yeah, I do remember this, Alan. Yeah, I'm going somewhere, isn't it? These flat things. I'm going, I think. Haven't spotted anything yet. Yeah, go ahead. Mosquito. Who's that? They're bright, aren't they? Try to see with his lights on for <laughs> Red Watch's first machine, known as the ladder, has arrived before them. Is your main beam down there? Get off me. Turn your lights. 85B. What number is this? What number's block? yours here? We're 87. 87, it's, eight. it's this here, this block, 85B we've got. Oh, Rail. 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 It's the same block we had last time. It wasn't? is. Smell it. Have you got water? Tell them to open the tank. The tank's not on the ladder. Tell them to open the tank. Bobby's doing it. The fire is in a cupboard on the landing in between the front doors of the flats. The pump is not giving us water. It doesn't work the tank shut. Yeah. Nothing's worse. Although the fire's small, whatever's burning is giving off large amounts of noxious fumes. One of them's asthmatic. I know which one. Oh, Bobby, so I got the oxygen for someone. Yeah. For some air. Do you want some oxygen left? The woman in the flat next to the fire has asthma. The smoke must be kept out of her home. It looks as though the fire has been started by children. Not hanging round in there. 
<coughs> oh, that's nasty, that. Isn't it? That's twice we've been here now, isn't it? You're shaking, are you? The only way to clear the smoke quickly is to blow large amounts of air in. God, I'm powerful. You all right now, are you? Ah! Yeah. Oh. oh, give it another go. <laughs> We're going to clear the cupboard out for you, because there shouldn't be anything in that. If it's kept empty, uh, there's nothing for them to torch, is there? Yeah. Oh. That was horrible smoke, Alan. What is? it? Oh, wash it. Sorry, whoever that was. <laughs> Got Kiffin on the head. <laughs> I actually didn't know you were there, I'll be honest. No, I didn't do it. I wanted to share it for the gnome. Like, that'll do. Are you going down the stairs with it? Treat them hard. Treat them rough. They love it. <laughs> the fire was out in minutes. Clearing the smoke has taken much longer. Just another day. The fumes were horrible. Really nasty. And the couch was filthy. But it was the mattress. It was an old horsehair mattress. With about 30,000 million years of urine content. We've been there a couple of times to that flat. Or there and thereabouts. Um, don't know what it is. The locals store all their junk in an owl cupboard. The kids come along and torch it. And we come along and put it out and throw it out. Then they come along and pour it back in again and torch it again. We love it. It's great. But it makes an awful mess of me hair. Back at the tower block, the casualty has been treated for smoke inhalation, the clean-up operations completed, and Gary's crew are on their way home. Come on, lads, let's go. See you back at the ranch. Anyone got any blocks with the pedals here? Left hand, reach them. The fire in the house being renovated was caused by furniture which had been deliberately set alight. The arsonists were never found. No evidence was found to link the teenage boy with the fire at the shared house. The inconsistencies in his account were put down to confusion caused by the fire. Psychologist Catherine Scave's car was a write-off. She bought another one, but two weeks later, it was also damaged when someone put a brick through the window.